Welcome to Discourse. I am Susil Pandey. Nepal has been facing an unofficial embargo from its southern neighbor India for almost two and a half months. Nepali people have been severely suffering due to the shortages of fuel, medicine, and food stuffs. The Indian blockade has violated international human rights law, creating humanitarian crisis in Nepal. However, the crisis does not seem to be resolved anytime soon. Today, I am going to talk regarding Indian blockage and its possible solution with Chairperson of Forum Asia, Asian Forum for Human Rights and Development, Henry Tifan. Okay, Mr. Henry, welcome to the show. You are the Chairperson of Asian Forum for Human Rights and Development. Why are you are in Nepal now? Well, I'm, I'm uh, here for um, two, three reasons. Yeah. There are three back-to-back -back meetings in, in Kathmandu. Uh, but the primary reason is because we have had our South Asia members meeting of Forum Asia in Kathmandu. We also have a meeting of the task force mm -hmm. on the regional initiative for a South Asian human rights mechanism also taking place here. So these are the two reasons I've been brought to Kathmandu. Yeah. What does your institution do? Well, Forum Asia is a regional human rights organization. In it's South Asia? In, you know, it's based in Asia. Mm -hmm. So we have a South Asia unit, we have a Northeast Asia unit, and we have a Southeast Asia unit. Yeah. And our headquarters are in Bangkok. We have offices in Bangkok. We have a small office in Kathmandu for South Asia. We have an office in Jakarta mm -hmm. for Southeast Asia and in Geneva. <coughs> and we concentrate on human rights issues. We are a membership-based organization. Mm -hmm. We concentrate on human rights issues, and that is what uh, is our day-to-day uh, -day work. But Mr. Henry, unfortunately, you are in Nepal at a time when Nepal is facing such kind of unofficial embargo, a blockage, due to which Nepali people are suffering badly. And you are also the person related to the human rights. How do you think, what do you think about the Indian embargo to Nepal? Well, I think uh, I should uh, use this opportunity as uh, also a person of Indian origin coming from India to say that I've come to Kathmandu several times in the past. Yeah. I've always come here as a very proud Indian because uh, we have such a uh, tradition of friendship uh, between the people of Nepal and the people of India. And this time I come here with no pride but a lot of humility and a lot of shame. Yeah. Because I think there has been not an unofficial embargo, but almost an official embargo. Yes, two days ago when the Indian um, uh, ambassador took the floor on the uh, UN Human Rights Council, when Nepal was appearing for the Universal Periodic Review in Geneva, mm -hmm. I think the cat was out of the box. When India made official demands, almost owning the the embargo. So this is, I don't think, any unofficial embargo. This has become an What do you think? Isn't the Indian action move is, this uh, is a human gross human rights violation? Well, as I was coming to your, to your studio, what I could see on the streets of uh, Nepal shocked my conscience. We were in the office of the Secretary General of SARC and I poured out to him and I said, as the Secretary General, please convey it to one of your members in India that I, as an Indian, I feel ashamed to see what I see on the street. Piles and piles of cars lined up for kilometers, two wheelers lined up for kilometers yeah. for just three three liters of, of, of uh, petrol yeah. and five liters of petrol in a car. These are the visual. This things. is what I see. What but I don't see is your kitchen. Kitchen, yeah. Where the medicine that the person they cannot get. Yeah. So this is a violation of rights of people, and if it, this is being done from a country. Whose, whose chief minister, whose prime minister was welcomed by the people of this country in thousands, not on the main streets of Kathmandu, but on the bylanes of Kathmandu about a little more than a year ago. Has this prime minister of India forgotten that the people of this country had welcomed him? Has he forgotten all the promises he made? I think if there are any differences, it is there are, there are channels for communicating those differences. Constitution making is the business of a sovereign state. Yeah. And Nepal, which has gone through a crisis for the last nine years, 
after the monarchy has finally come out with a constitution. And we are aware that your constitution has come out with uh, a clause by clause voting mm -hmm. in your parliament. Your constitution is unique. Yeah. It has several provisions, almost uh, 33 Mr. provisions. Mr. Mr. Hira, I'll talk about our constitution in the latter half of our program. My first question is being a defender of human rights in the South, in the Asian, Asian region also. Uh, what do you think? Why India is doing such kind of human rights, human rights violations? Well, uh, there, are, there, are two, two, there, are, there are two versions. One version is what the government of India will speak. And the other version will be definitely what the government will not speak, what the politicians will not speak, but is the underlying reason. I am sure India, which is under a particular rule of the BJP at the moment, would have expected the constitution of your country yeah. to announce itself as a Hindu nation. And your country has chosen to announce yourself as a secular country. And that, I think, is a blow to people who expected this country to be a Hindu nation, so that their Hindu nation could expand pan, pan, pan South Asian and move into, into Nepal. And I think there was a deception in that. And these measures are coercive measures to convey that deception within themselves. And that is why it is not official. And that is why it is being engineered. Yes, there are differences in Nepal. And every country has its differences. We have differences in our country. So I think the reason is precisely the deception from Nepal, which has asserted its sovereignty through the promulgation of its constitution. I think that is the reason. But what, such, what kind of provision we should include in the constitution? It is not, it is not my business. It's not my business as an Indian to come and tell what are the provisions that has to be included. I think you've got... Uh, you've got no, no, no. My question is, it is our internal matter. Yes. Okay. Our constant assembly will decide what kind of provision should be included in the constitution or right. what kind of provision should not be. You're right. It, it's the decision should be taken by the Nepali people. That's exactly Nepali what I'm saying. Nepali parliamentarian. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. So, if you have, if India had any concerns, these concerns have to be expressed in a different way, not by through blockades of this sort. And my appeal through your channel yeah. is not only to the government of India, but to the people of India, mm -hmm. particularly the states adjoining the Nepal, to stand by the people of Nepal and ensure that this embargo is removed and there is civil society pressure put on the government of India to ensure that this embargo is removed. This embargo is bringing a humanitarian crisis in Nepal. But the, the, the situation at the shine is not like that, as you said, that India is not showing any shine to put an end to the current embargo. It is saying that it is, we are not imposing any embargo. It is because of the disturbances uh, taking place in the uh, border points. Okay? It is not uh, saying directly I, that... I, I, I come from an organization which has passed a resolution yesterday. We are sending a team. We are, we are not wanting to believe either the Indian media or the Nepali media, we are sending a, a, a team to all the entry points where it is alleged that mm -hmm. there is a blockade. And we want to see who the people who are engaged in the blockade. Are these people from Nepal or are these Indians who are on the Nepali side imposing a blockade? I think the truth will be out and this will be out in the next two, three days. Yeah. But one thing is very clear that the place, the transit point where there is not any disturbances there is no vehicular transportation between India and Nepal also. That is also blocked. Yes, I, I agree. But what I'm saying is it, is, it is very clear on the borders from what we understand from our discussions in Nepal that it is people from India, people engineered from India, yeah. who are there imposing the blockade. Uh -huh. But we need to go and verify. So we are, we are also undertaking a verification so that we are able to tell the Indian people that the blockade is not a blockade by protesters from the Nepali side, but this is a blockade from people from India who are posted on, on the Nepali side of the border to ensure that this blockade continues. Even if it continues, uh, my dear friend, even if there is a blockade which is coming from the Nepali side, if there is a, a role that India should play, mm -hmm. India by now should have played that role. So well, What kind of role that may be? I mean, there are so many ways this, this can be negotiated. This, this is a matter which the Prime Minister of our country should have been able to discuss with the Prime Minister of your country. 
Yeah. This is a matter where the foreign minister of my country should have been able to discuss with the foreign minister of your country. When there is a crisis, we have to do everything at our disposal to see that the crisis is is removed. Wo- what are the vehicles in the border? Mm-hmm. These vehicles in the border are as a result of certain treaties, which should be respected internationally. Nepal is is a is a country which is landlocked. Yeah, and a landlocked country. Almost India have, locked from three places, and should be able to have access to the ports. And if there are goods which are being brought into through transit through India, that has to be allowed entry into this then, country. Then, then, an interesting question maybe may, may bloomed over here as to why India is doing that. It is a very democratic country, as it claimed itself. But you according are, to you, you are also, right in saying that we claim ourselves to be a democracy. Ours is a democracy, yes, but we are ashamed that many democratic principles that exist in smaller democracies like your country do not exist in larger democracies like India. That's the truth. We come from a, a country today where there is total intolerance. This democracy that you all talk about does not today allow civil society organizations to speak out. Yeah. It does not allow civil society organizations to 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 believe in dissent. it does not allow civil society organizations to take a protest we are under real curtailment which you people here in this country respect civil society organizations for so civil society organizations are a vibrant part of democracy which unfortunately in our country is not being allowed so these are imaginary things about this large democracy there is the reality of democracy which is completely different yeah you may be raising voices inside your country also yeah We are, raising, we are raising. Uh, we are. We have. We have issued a statement today, uh, as South Asian members of Forum Asia, we have initiated an urgent appeal with signature campaign throughout South Asia, and we hope that several civil society organizations will stand with Nepal in this humanitarian crisis. Then let me know one thing about India. What is happening inside it? For example, uh, human rights activist Iram Sarvila has been in hunger strike for almost 15 years. Yeah. a number of people we speak out for the democracy for the uh, people's right human rights for example professor kalvorgi and others they were killed on the day broad daylight in the democratic country that tries to suggest the neighbor to be democratic why it is happening inside i mean our crisis within india is a continuing crisis we are very happy for the first time our friends in nepal are speaking about it our friends in nepal were considering ourselves as good friends and therefore very silent about happenings in, inside our country i am in a way happy that this crisis has allowed uh, friends in nepal to start now speaking about india uh, india through through being this big brother in the in the region was silencing nepal into speaking out i am happy that under your new prime minister who is a a a a a kb sharma oli a, a different type of a of a being a true human being a person who has been in prison for 14 years in his life we understand mm-hmm. a person who has been in solitary confinement for 6 years out of those 14 a person who has been in underground life for almost 6 years is your prime minister a prime minister who really believes and breathes human rights and i think under your leadership you will now start speaking many things which in the past were never spoken about india and i think you will start asserting your sovereignty in the way your sovereignty has to be ascertained and we as indians are proud that that nepal will be a country which is a model in south asia a model because your country listens to civil society in nepal your civil society is very vibrant and perhaps this is the most vibrant civil society south asia possesses in numbers india may be india may be large but in quality mm-hmm. i think nepal civil society has a very qualitative presence mm-hmm. and i think there's a lot to learn indian democracy has to humble itself mm-hmm. to learn from the fall from the democracy in nepal mm-hmm. your but but it is suggesting to include such kind of provisions or is, should not include such is, kind of provision in the, the constitution it is the government in time which is suggesting very soon this government will have to silent itself the election results in bihar will come out yeah. very soon on the 8th and if the results are different there will be total silencing in the country the artists in our country 
the writers in our country yeah. the filmmakers in our country have, are all in protest mm-hmm. but it's because of the intolerance in our country therefore a country which is not able to get to 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 handle a prime minister who's not able to handle handle intolerance and inclusiveness in this large democracy camp, uh, called india has no right to suggest Then do you have has no right to suggest what the <laughs> policy should be do you have any idea to join hands between the people of civil society of nepal and civil society of india to fight for the common cause between were, two countries we were already here during the people to, to, to enhance it to improve it <coughs> to during the sark meeting we were here in large numbers we were here for a people sark and your government of that time welcome people sark your foreign minister came to the people sark meeting yeah. to receive our memorandum mm-hmm. that was the respect that was shown to the civil society from south asia yeah. the peoples of south asia the peoples of india and nepal will always be together civil society organizations will always be together unfortunately it is the government which is engaged in this process and i think we will go back as very humble indians and make sure that we make known what shocked our conscience when mm-hmm. we walked through the corridors of Kathmandu. Mr. Hindu, actually Nepali intellectuals, Nepali media, Nepali people in the real sense don't want to jeopardize the relationship between Nepal and India. They honestly, they don't want to jeopardize the relationship. Your government doesn't want it. Yeah. Your government doesn't want to uh, jeopardize relationships. Yeah. Your government wants to be patient. But I think there is a role for other institutions. We all come from a country where we have national human rights institutions. And this is a crisis where the right to food of people is is affected. The right to health of people is affected. Right to education. Right to education of people is affected. And when all these rights are affected, the right to life of people is affected. Yeah. And when right to life of people is affected, then human rights of our people is affected. I cannot have a national human rights commission in my country which reads the newspapers every day. Yeah. of an unofficial embargo which is preventing uh, 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 materials um, being transported across the border and entering the neighboring country i think the national human rights commission of our country has to communicate its concern as a true human rights body and as a true human rights defender coming from india it will be our role to also appeal to our national human rights commission i think the role here in civil society here would be to appeal to the national human rights commission of of um, of uh, nepal to be able to communicate to the government of india if it is convinced that there is a role for the government of india i think we have to go off to these institutions and ensure that these institutions which are supposed to put human rights into practice are also able to put pressure on their respective governments to see that this uh, impasse is broken then what should nepal do to resolve this kind of current crisis nepal has to start speaking Nepal has Then who remained, listen we are speaking uh, Nepal uh, media Nepal Nepal has remained silent for many years I think Nepal has to speak its conscience Nepal has got has created sufficient credibility yeah and I think with that credibility Nepal should be able to speak but it is assumed that we are speaking Nepali people are speaking like they are using social network site also but uh, why they often ask question why international communities aren't listening Nepali people I don't think um, uh, to be very frank uh, to be very honest I don't think the South Asian media is covering this crisis in the way it should be covered yeah uh, the Indian media which was so interested in covering so many issues in Nepal during your your earthquake yeah has perhaps to do a big role now mm-hmm. to cover and see the humanitarian crisis that is going on in Nepal mm-hmm. if it is interested in building the, their coverage includes they are blaming China and they are they are sometimes they are blaming china because nepal is uh, having or trying to in a kind of agreement with or uh, to import petrol from china if, like if, that if, so it's kind if, of issues are being covered in if fuel cannot come through the indian soil cross the indian soil and reach nepal soil then nepal is in a very difficult situation so there is a temporary impasse by looking forward to any other person who will come and help and the person and the country which comes and helps is the country which Nepal will go to. Yeah. This is very unfortunate, but that is it. Mm-hmm. Mr. Indra, do you mean that, uh, what do you mean? Does it mean that the track one diplomacy between Nepal and India to resolve such kind of crisis was already failure? I think, I think uh, we have not utilized uh, that sufficiently. 
I think uh, leaving bureaucrats, leaving elected representatives, leaving ministers alone to communicate uh, in, on such issues uh, is, is very restrictive. Mm -hmm. I think the peoples of this country have to start communicating. I think I as an Indian have a role to play in Delhi. I have to mobilize more people in Delhi to start putting pressure within the media in Delhi, through parliamentarians in Delhi, to show how ashamed we as Indians should be for this crisis to continue. And I think that kind of a process is something which will bring change in this uh, present That state. may be track to diplomacy. Uh, track to diplomacy and street level diplomacy. I think street level pressure showing that the Indian peoples do not approve of this is what is actually required. I, I think large number of people will have to, to, to be mobilized. A people's mobilization is what will solve these issues. Okay, one, I, I want to demand one thing from you very clearly for my audience. What should or what can Indian civil society like you do to put and into current crisis of Nepal in a very well, as I told you, as a commitment. I, I told you I'm, I'm coming from an organization which is uh, which has uh, today passed a resolution, which has today undertaken a, a, a signature campaign among civil society organizations in South Asia, and therefore it also includes India. And we are sending a team of members to the border areas, because I think the stories that we will collect from the border areas, yeah. the stories that we'll collect from the Nepali border areas of ordinary people and how they are affected. I think these human interest stories will then be fed into the media. These human interest stories will then be fed as human rights activists to the UN Special Rapporteurs on Right to Food, on the UN Special Rapporteurs on Right to Health, on the UN Special Rapporteurs on Right to Education, on the UN Special Rapporteurs on Right to Association and Expression, so that a lot of pressure is put on India. I think that has that is the role, that is the space uh, civil society organizations can operate. It is by going there, collecting these human interest stories yeah. and bringing it back into the Indian media and to the United Nations. This is the role I think we can do. Okay. Earlier, Mr. Narendra Modi, Indian Prime Minister, was very popular in Nepal. Yes. But his popularity is deteriorating, being deteriorated in Nepal as the embargo started. I'm very and happy. I'm why? very happy. Why are you happy? I was very shocked. I was extremely shocked to see the uproar in this country when he came. The praise, the eulogy. Yes, he came with an adopted Indian son. And all of us, all of you were so so happy that the Indian Prime Minister had adopted a Nepali son. Yeah. He came first to your Pasupati temple. Mm -hmm. And you had all Indian flags and Nepali flags in the streets and by lanes of Kathmandu. That was the abundant love that the people gave but they didn't give it to 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 modi they gave it to india india yeah that is the respect this country had for the people of, of india. india and i want to assure you that the people of india have the same respect mm -hmm. unfortunately that respect of a particular individual who received that respect has not been reciprocated that is what is the change the people of india have never forgotten nepal and i think the people of nepal will never forget india and the people of India. And I think it is these two people's relationships which should continue. We should not allow by any chance the embargo issue to, to spoil the relationships between the people of Nepal and the people of India, which has been nurtured for so many generations together. And that should be maintained at all costs. But Mr. Henry, it is not the first time India has imposed embargo to Nepal. Maybe it is the, the third time. In the second time is 1990, while Nepali people are struggling for the democracy for the second time in Nepal. And now still India is imposing at the time when Nepal is trying to sow its independence, sovereignty, trying to sow its sovereignty in Nepal, India is trying to control it. I'm, I'm, um, I'm very happy that uh, Nepal is asserting its sovereignty. I'm very happy that people in Nepal are now willing to speak. I am very happy that you now have spoken through your constitution. Your constitution was the voice of Nepal. And your constitution and some of the provisions in your constitution really show the power of, this, of, the, of the people of Nepal and, and, and the quality of that power of the people of Nepal. And I think this, is, this crisis has given an opportunity. Yeah. Henceforth, Nepal is not going to be a quiet country mm. which is going to allow its elder brother 
neighboring elder brother to speak nepal will speak for itself yeah. and we people will have to put pressure on our own country in 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 south asia to say that we will have to learn to live with a neighbor mm -hmm. we will have to learn to live with a friend and we will have to learn and respect them as equal partners in ensuring peace in the region you know that nepal has just promulgated new constitution what indian people indian intellectuals indian or uh, human rights activists like you think about the new constitution well, we are what? we are uh, for, from for the last two days we have been pestering our friends here to get an english translation of your lovely constitution yeah i have just been assured by my good friend subodhi here yeah. that the english translation will be given your prime minister yesterday evening in a dinner meeting with us also assured he give us an english translation yeah. we need to study your constitution we have only understood that there are provisions inside we have heard about very meaningful provisions in your constitution which our country doesn't have your country is going is has a president who is a woman mm -hmm. your country very soon i understand is going to have uh, a chief justice who is going to be a woman yeah all leaders in your country are going to be uh, are going to be women i think this is unique you have a 33% of your constitution of your of your parliament which has women yeah. we are speaking about it for 15 plus years in our country and it has not happened i think there are many things where we have to remain silent read your constitution clause by clause and instead of me speaking to you see how many of those clauses are applicable in my own country mm -hmm. i think that introspection I hope that introspection will take place when the English version of your constitution yeah. is made available to us. What do you think about the current ongoing agitation happening in Thora area of Nepal? Well, uh, every country which has diverse society uh, there will be different voices. And I think that space for those voices should be allowed. And I think your country should give space for that voice to be heard. and for the demands that emerge from that voice to be taken up in parliament mm -hmm. i think your prime minister is mature enough your parliament is mature enough to be able to to intake yeah. those voices and to come to this uh, decisions which you think are fit within your country and one very simple but i don't think okay. we should allow neighbors yeah to be able to dictate mm -hmm. terms which are favorable to them because these voices are coming from the border one very simple question nepali people want to know that when will india know that realize that indian especially establishment indian establishment know that nepal has rights its own right to promulgate its own constitution when will it know when the indian diplomat when the indian bureaucrat realizes for himself or herself that the people in his country have rights only then we'll be able to understand that the people in the neighboring country also have rights unfortunately many of our bureaucrats are not people who believe that their own people have rights mm. they think they are the babus it is the babu culture which oh, is now being looked at big brother attitude from the other side so when you speak in terms of rights they don't understand because these are not people who believe in rights yeah. they don't believe in rights in their own country how will they believe in rights in, with you mm -hmm. so i think there's a, a lot of change that needs to happen with bureaucrats on our side on diplomats yeah. on our side in mm -hmm. terms of believing that peoples have rights i think that is that belief your country through the various struggles that you have had mm -hmm. through the various loss of lives and blood in this country yeah. you have learned that this is we are this. at the end of the program what do you want to say to nepali people i end? want to say that i came here to nepal for another meeting and the meeting was for a demand in south asia for a south asian human rights mechanism nepal perhaps is the only country in south asia where a prime minister is willing to consider suggesting to the sarc that there is a need for a south asian human rights mechanism and i cannot but use this this very difficult situation to make the people of nepal to make the people of south asia understand that beyond our borders there are violations that take place and these are examples of those violations mm -hmm. there are violations in trafficking there are violations in terrorism there are violations in border killings there are violations in our in in fishermen of each of our countries being in the jails of the next countries mm -hmm. we need a south asian human rights mechanism latin america and americas have it 
Africa has it, Europe has it, Southeast Asia has it, mm -hmm. why not South Asia? And your Prime Minister, we appealed, to, we appealed to your Prime Minister yesterday and we got an assurance from your Prime Minister that he will definitely take this up. Mm -hmm. And perhaps he will be the only Prime Minister mm -hmm. who will be able to take it up with a SARC initially, believing yeah. that a South Asian human rights mechanism is important. Mm -hmm. And I think civil society in South Asia should be able to support this demand which my organization Forum Asia is promoting through this initiative mm -hmm. called the Regional Initiative for a South Asian Human Rights Mechanism. Okay, Mr. Henry, thank you very much for giving us thank time you. indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.